What computer should I get when learning to code? This is one of the most common questions I get from beginners, and for the first time in my career, I'm changing my answer. I've used a Windows PC for most of my career. Windows is the most common OS in businesses, and I've done quite a bit of professional coding in C Sharp using the .NET framework. And up until around 2015, the .NET framework was Windows only. But when .NET Core was released, true cross-platform finally arrived. But up until then, a Windows PC just made sense for me, and it was easy for me to recommend. However, going forward, my recommendation is that the Mac Mini M4 with 24 gig of RAM is hands down the best starter machine for anyone who wants to learn to code in 2026. Stick around if you wanna understand why. And when I told some of my friends, the immediate question was, why would someone like Eric, who built a significant part of their career around Windows, suddenly start recommending a Mac? Well, first, the price to performance ratio is really good on the Mac minis. Now, personally, I purchased one of the cheaper Mac mini configurations because I teach a lot of students and they're usually on a budget. It has a regular M4 chip, 512 gigabyte hard drive, 24 gigs of RAM, and the cheapest base model only has 16 gigabytes of RAM. But as I always tell people getting started, if you have some extra budget, put it into more RAM. The MSRP was $1,000, but I found it on sale at my favorite computer store, Micro Center, for 850 bucks. That is a great price for that kind of power. Now I know that 512 gigabytes isn't a very large hard drive today, but Apple's hard drive upgrade pricing isn't a good deal at all. So I picked up an external hard drive enclosure from Ugreen that supports Thunderbolt 4, and I slapped a two terabyte Samsung M2 drive in it, and I was all set. There's some affiliate links in the description below if you're interested in my specific setup. But adding two terabytes directly from Apple is about $600, and going the external route that I did was only $200. I install all of my apps on the main drive and I keep all my code and media on the external drive. So all in with the external drive setup, my total cost was about $1,050. Now I was able to save some money since I already had a keyboard, mouse, and monitors because my home is a technology warehouse. I have the mini connected to two 1440p monitors and I run my IDEs, databases, and cloud-based AI assistants with no issues at all. I do recommend dual monitors if you can afford them because it's one of the biggest productivity boosts you can get in a workspace. Also, the Mini's compact form factor makes it ideal for dorm rooms and smaller workspaces. The fans are also really quiet if they come on at all. I rarely push mine to that point when coding. Now the next reason is that the terminal experience is superior to what you get out of the box in Windows. The Mac terminal uses Unix commands and directory formats, and this means that when you learn enough coding to start deploying your applications to servers, which are usually Linux, you'll come in with a good foundation and you won't need as much translation as a Windows user. And with command line tooling like Homebrew, getting your environment set up is actually easier than what you go through on Windows. And yes, I'm aware that Windows has package managers too, but they're just not as good. And last, we need to talk about Microsoft and Windows. I've been increasingly annoyed with Microsoft over the last few years, but it was kind of a boiling frog scenario. I didn't realize how bad things were getting until I started using the Mac. So the first thing I noticed is that I wasn't being bombarded on Mac OS to buy a whole bunch of extra cloud crap. No in-operating system ads for Edge, OneDrive, Microsoft 365, Teams, or any of that other crap. As a professional, I want to use the tools that I choose. I want to store my files on my own computer, in my house that I own. And I really don't want AI tools scanning everything I own. I have a backup strategy, it works great, and I want to be left alone about it. I didn't fully realize how intrusive and nagging Windows was getting until it wasn't there anymore. I also need to address Copilot. It's by far the worst AI assistant, and I've used them all. But Microsoft seems hell-bent on putting it in 
everything in the OS. And I have big concerns regarding security and privacy with these moves. LLMs are easily compromised and they can be prompted to expose confidential information. Most of the security professionals that I work with, they're horrified by the push to grant these tools access to critical files and system functionality. And we're also seeing some significant quality issues with Windows updates. Just this year, they've managed to break localhost, they prevented mouse and keyboards from working in the recovery environment, they've broken smart card authentication, and they've bricked people's hard drives. Microsoft has been laying off developers and mandating increased AI usage, and I don't think I'm alone in thinking that the product quality is trending down. In contrast, the Mac OS experience has been a breath of fresh air. Yes, I've had to relearn my hotkeys. But other than that, it's been a pretty smooth transition. I have some pretty powerful machines running here at home. But honestly, when the time comes, I'm going to switch them all to Mac and Linux. Now, I know that switching operating systems is a learning experience. It can be a bit jarring, especially if you've been on Windows your whole life. So I've been documenting and recording video of getting Mac OS set up for software development. I'll be releasing some videos on YouTube, but I'm actually building a full course and I'm gonna give it away for free. This course will cover everything beginners need to know to get started. This includes the file system, how to use the terminal, installing and configuring development tools for the most popular programming languages, and how to set up and use Git as a solo developer. The goal here is to take complete beginners from, I want to get started with coding, to, hey, I'm all set up and ready to start learning to code. To get the free course when it launches, head over to skillfoundry.io and create a free account. You can also enroll in the other free courses that are already available. So again, from someone who's been an exclusive Windows user for almost 30 years, I'm telling you that I'm recommending the Apple Mac Mini M4 as the best value in starter coding machines. Happy coding.